Lesson 5.2, Adding and Subtracting Decimals. In fifth grade math, chapter three, we learn to model, add, and subtract decimals. And we can use grid paper to model operations that involve decimals. We make one whole by making 100 little squares of 10 across and 10 down. We make a 10th by doing a column of 10, and 1 hundredth would be one little square of the one whole. To model 4 tenths plus 4 tenths, each column is a tenth. We shade in four of them. We shade in four more. It's equal to 8 tenths. We've shaded eight of the 10 columns. To model adding 27 hundredths plus 27 hundredths, we have 100 squares here. We shade in 27 of them. Then we shade in another 27 of them. It's equal to 54 hundredths. We've shaded 54 of the 100 squares. Now, if you don't remember this from last year or you're rusty, there's links to fifth grade math 3.5 and 3.6 where we did this. We can add and subtract decimals easily by writing our equation in vertical form, stacking the place values correctly, and lining up the decimal points. We have 27 hundredths plus 27 hundredths it's equal to 54 hundredths. And remember, we can turn a sheet of lined paper sideways to keep our place values lined up. If you don't have grid paper, you can use a sheet of lined paper. If you don't have lined paper, you can make lined paper. If we combine 5 and 19 hundredths cups of orange juice with 2 and 75 hundredths cups pineapple juice in a pitcher, how much total liquid is in the pitcher? We think the juices are combined and we need a total, so we add. We have them stacked nicely with their decimal points lined up. We add just as we would add regularly for an addition algorithm, and we regroup when needed. We make sure our decimal point is there, and we remember to label the answer as cups because we're talking about the quantity of cups of juice. And we can estimate to check by rounding each number to the nearest whole number. We could even round it to the nearest tenth. Five and nineteen hundredths can be round to five. Two and seventy-five hundredths, that can be round to three. That's eight cups, and eight is close to seven and ninety-four hundredths, so our answer is reasonable. And we learned about rounding decimals in 3.7 back in fifth grade. That'll be linked in the description, too, as a refresher. We can write 8 tenths as 80 hundredths or 800 thousandths because the size of their shaded area is the same. The size of the pieces that are represented are different. These each represent a tenth, but because these pieces are split into more parts, it represents 80 hundredths. And here, each hundredth is split into 10 little pieces, so this represents 800 thousandths. Each square is the same size, each big square, and the same amount is shaded pink. They all represent the same amount of area. That means being able to add zeros to the right side of a decimal number will help us to subtract decimals. If we see 8 tenths minus 165 thousandths, we can add some zeros as placeholders then both numbers will have the same amount of digits, and we can subtract. And when adding decimals, we can write zeros to the right of the decimal number. If we see this, we can put zeros as placeholders, so they'll have the same amount of digits. But we can also see here that there's no other hundredths except the four, so we just drop the four down. Then we add the tenths place. There's 13 of those, so we regroup. We bring our decimal point down, and 1 and 1 is 2. So either way, when we're adding, we can just add, or we can add some zeros as placeholders. But when we subtract, it is very helpful to use zeros as placeholders. Remember, money amounts have two digits to the right of the decimal point for fractions of a dollar. If we see $20 minus $6.47, we can write 
a couple of zeros here as placeholders to do our subtraction. And remember to write your dollar sign because we're dealing with money. Here we have a multi-step word problem. It says a bag can hold one and five tenths pounds of jelly beans if we put in four tenths pound of orange, 15 hundredths pound of grape, and 35 hundredths pound of cherry into the bag, how many more pounds of jelly beans will we need to fill the bag? And we think we need to total what was put in, the orange, grape, and cherry, then subtract that amount from how much the bag can hold. We add the four tenths, we put a zero here if we need to as a placeholder, and we have five and five is 10, we regroup, we can put the zero here. We have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We know that zero is just a placeholder. We have nine tenths that's in the bag. We can subtract one and five tenths minus the nine tenths to see we have six tenths pound more to fill the bag. So now we've completed this lesson, we're gonna move on to multiply decimals. And remember the description has those links to fifth grade math that will help you catch up if you've forgotten this stuff. So remember you can use zero as placeholders. Remember to line up your decimal points nice and pretty. Have a really great day. Hit that like button and I'll see you next time. Bye.